this is how cleaning with alcohol feels like. You spray some alcohol, wipe bacteria with it, and boom, there's scraps of nothing. But what does it do? Alcohol kills bacteria by disrupting the chemical structure of their components. The most commonly used type of alcohol is ethanol, usually found in hand sanitizers. Its hydrophobic and hydrophilic ends enable modifying chemical bonds, changing the molecular structure of components. But how does ethanol break down bacteria? Let's say this is the cell membrane of the bacteria. Ethanol first approaches near the cell membrane of bacteria, also made of hydrophobic and hydrophilic ends. Ethanol uses a hydroxyl group, or this brick part of the brick separator, to make a new hydrogen bond with hydrophilic ends of the membrane and pull them out to create a new gap. Now that there's a big hole, more ethanol molecules can enter to the cytoplasm of the bacteria to break more components. Now that ethanol entered through the membrane, its next destination is the protein. Ethanol would dive deep into the secondary structure, the bent arrangement of amino acids within the chain, right here. This bond is part of the active site of an enzyme called GAPDH, which is essential for DNA repairs of bacteria. Ethanol uses its hydroxyl end to make new hydrogen bonds between hydroxyl groups, each from tyrosine and a aspartic acid and breaks previously present hydrogen bonds with its carbon chain. The result is a gap within the chain, causing its original shape to shift, as well as those of tertiary and quaternary structures, making the entire protein non-functional. Even with this complicated Lego dome, just a few pops with this brick separator turns this dome into what's not a dome. Well, now it's just a pile of bricks. Oh yeah, one more thing. Alcohol can keep your hands clean after touching some Legos. White blood cells fight against infections and diseases in order to protect our body. But have you ever think about how they could be harmful? You can easily think having a lot of them can be good for your body because the more you have, the more protection you get. But it's not. If our bone marrow produces an excessive amount of blood cells, especially white blood cells, they become abnormal cancerous white blood cells called myeloblasts. Too many myeloblasts can cause cancer called acute myeloid leukemia or AML. AML can happen at any age and its symptoms are fatigue, paleness, frequent infections, bruising and bleeding. To treat AML's overproduction of myeloblasts, we can use a 7 plus 3 regimen one of the chemotherapies that inject antiviral drug Cytarabine for 7 days followed by anthracycline for 3 days. Cytarabine is an effective antiviral drug that seizes the DNA replication of cells. Then, how does Cytarabine stop the DNA replication of myeloblasts? You can think of Cytarabine as a faulty Lego block, which is similar to another Lego block called Cytidine, and its basic structure has both are nucleoside analogs. You can think them as a blocks of similar size, shape, and color. But cytarabine lacks a 3' hydroxyl group knob. Then the builder mistakenly grips a cytarabine instead of cytidine and puts the 3 phosphate blocks in the next step and makes it into one RCTP, the form which is incorrectly assembled that is attached to the other Lego blocks. However, since RCTP lacks a 3' hydroxyl group knob, another Lego builder, DNA polymerase alpha, which attaches nucleotide blocks to the DNA's 3' hydroxyl group knob, cannot proceed with further attachments for the DNA construction of the Lego building. As a result, construction of the LEGO building or replication of myeloblasts eventually stops. Therefore, having a lot of white blood cells can be harmful to your body because it can lead to acute myeloleukemia. But, it can be treated within a chemotherapy called 7 plus 3 regimen by using a drug that you learned today, say tyrabine.